have too many elements of Iranian culture to consider ourselves American alone. Okay, we all we have the language, we've got the music, we have the food, we have the culture, and we have the traditions. And all of these things are too integrated to all of our lives, regardless if we were born here or any other place, to say we're American, this is all we know is this culture, because it's just not true. Now, I was born here, I was born in, in, in an area in Chicago where there was not a huge Iranian community. I, as much as I had the cultural aspects at home, I always considered myself Iranian American. That's what I am. I was born here, but that's what my culture is. That's what it is. When, when as soon as I leave, left school, you entered an Iranian household. So I, I had that identity from a young age. When I was younger, it was uh, a difficult thing to grasp. I didn't always want to say this is what I am because of you know cultural biases. Especially you know kids are brutal. That's what they are. As I got older, I grew more and more proud of it, more and more accepting of it, and you know, ha admittedly say I am an Iranian American. When you're constantly changing um, societies and cultures, you try to figure out who you are. But with a strong traditional family background, there's still a sense of that. You know, where you come from. In your family, your father, for example, and your mother, watch out for that constantly. Whether it's, um, you know, coming home at a certain time, or the type of food, or, 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 you know, type of food, or type how much to certain. eat, or, you know, it's very specific, very elaborate, whereas in the American culture, I don't want to be biased about this, I don't want to stereotype anything either, because I've seen both ways, in the American culture, you've got people that are like, you know, you can come home whenever you want, you can, you know what, and they start losing track of, of their child, and they become like this, and they turn out to be like that, but with that kind of a tradition that we've had in our lives, we've just been exposed to where, and especially traveling from country to country in the past, uh, in the past 21 years of my, 22 years of my life and 21 years of my brother's life, we've, we've still held that, you know, who we are, this is my father, this is my mother, this is what we do on a daily basis, and these are my values, because those are the important things, are your values. I see as myself as just still as an Iranian, honestly. I, I can't hard. call myself myself. It's hard not to see yourself as an Iranian. I think a lot of the, um, like, our, our friends, we reflect what are in our families. So, like, some of the people that are Iranian see themselves as American because of what their family, what their core is made out of. I mean, a lot of Iranians that are here, that are, like, grown up and have families, they act so American, and so do their kids. For me, it was different. My mom being American and my dad being Iranian. My household wasn't, you know, it didn't have as much as that traditional core, you know. You have to speak for to see this is, you don't have a choice. And I feel like when I'm around our Iranian friends and everything, I feel more Iranian. And I guess I'm in a different situation. Sometimes I feel, you know, completely American and I forget that I'm half Iranian. And when I'm around Iranian family, friends, I embrace that so much. But there's that side that you don't see. And it, when I'm around Iranian family and friends, I feel like so much different, you know, and it's a better feeling too. It's not like, you know, I have this complex or anything. I feel more Iranian ever since I moved here. Because I learned so many other things that I didn't care about when I was there. And now I, I look for, I pick values, new values, new historical facts, and different stuff, and I identify myself as more Iranian. I know more stuff that I didn't think of back then. And honestly, ever since I've been here, the first six months, I had a few American friends, got to think it along with them. And, I'm, and then I met Iman, Amin, and the rest of the crew, and they're all Iranians. I don't have a close American friend. Raised in London, so I guess I'll be neither. But I'm some a British citizen. I was born in Wales. and. My whole life I was raised in uh, London. Both the parents are Iranian, so that had a, I think parents have a big aspect, you know, they had a big impact on me. And so I'm pretty much classified, if I can say that, as myself as an Iranian. But during childhood, I was surrounded with British, British people, people, yeah, so well, it's, I take both of it in. But I think a lot was what came from the family. And I had an apartment that I just moved out of. I lived there for about a year, but I came home on the weekends. But during the week, I would go over there and get so caught up in, in, into, in the, whole, the whole drama and going out and having a good time. And, 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 and the weekends, okay, I gotta spend the time with some, you know, I gotta spend time with my family. But during that week, by the time that week was over with, I wanted to go back. I wanted to go back because I knew that there was something that was more whole. When around my Iranian friends and family, I feel more whole. I feel different than I do around my parents. 
character friends. I feel like I'm missing something. I definitely speak Farsi with my Iranian friends. Like even when Iman called earlier, it was funny because he was speaking English and I was speaking Farsi. And I'm like, okay, Miam, okay, whatever. And it was funny because, I mean, and in our home, I mean, it's my parents are pretty liberal, you know, very roshafik, and you know, very, you know, um, we still stick with the customs and the traditions and. I definitely have a distinguishing factor between the two. Both my parents met here, they came when they were 17, they came in the 60s. You know, they met here, they married here. I was the last child, I was the youngest. And I honestly could not speak more than three words of Farsi until I was 17. I could, they would always tell you really obvious things and I did not understand what they were saying. I, I couldn't, I always felt I was missing out because I didn't know what people were saying. And it did bother me. Not only because it, it, it was a big obstacle for me to identify with, my, with what I would call in my own culture because I didn't even speak the language. I've tried so many times. I can't get along with white boys. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. It's not the language. They irritate me. It's the stuff true. that's normal for them, but they're, they're, you know how we are with together, like with yeah. Iman and Amin, they do certain things and they have an understanding of you, yeah. but when they come to your house, for example, you know that's yeah, a more relaxing shoes, you know? Yeah, yeah. But like when they pick up something, and when a white boy comes in, I, I hate American, to tell them, American, American, American. <laughs> to tell them take off, you see, did, but like they went to high school, they remember the songs, the, the movies, the TV shows, and they talk about it. I'm yes. standing there. I have like they talk about high school football games, all these jokes they did. I don't have anything to talk about. Lately, like dating. No, I don't get into that. That's a whole okay, separate. Okay, dating. Let's talk about other other aspects of culture that is part of your daily life. Okay. Other with news. News. Yeah. What news and uh, yeah, the news. What do you mean? Especially Especially lately, when when something big happens in Iran, that becomes the center of the conversation among Iranians. Okay. So keeping up with what's happening back home, back home yes. is an issue. Yes. That is part of your daily life. Yeah. Ali, you say why? Family. 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 Yeah. Do you see how they act? I think you take on a few of their aspects. Mm -hmm. The way you like you said before, taking mm -hmm. the shoes off on you in your house mm -hmm. reminds you of the culture. What about you, Mel? Yeah. Who? Just. That's another whole part, you know, like my mom, she's American, but she makes these Iranian dishes, and that's like, I eat rice. He mentioned family. When, I, when he said family, the first thing I thought of was uh, parental respect. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. And this is something that not a, not a lot of American people just have either a completely different concept of. Yeah. When I tell them, I, I can't go out, they're like, oh, just ask your dad, I'm sure he'll say yes. They don't. Sometimes they don't understand that that's not yeah, the point. Just, you just don't. Yeah. There are certain, and that, this is, and I've noticed this is among all Iranians and Iranian Americans. It's just there. That is a very essential part of the culture. That's really hard to, I don't know, intertwine with American culture. Guys, I, I can't come out tonight. Why? I, I may smoke, but I'll never smoke in front of my parents. You know, th th these kind of things. I have friends who be like, "Come over, spend the night. Don't say you're at our house." And I, I just, I can't. You know, there's. That part of me, I'm just like, there's no way I can yeah, do that. I'm, or whether I'm afraid of my dad, or just there's too much respect in it. You know, he put so much into coming to this country and raising a family with respect and these traditions that you know he's installed in us. But you know, I can't, I can't disrespect him that way. The American side, I, you know, it's funny because I was thinking about this when you were asking us. You know, what do we see ourselves? And it's kind of not fair that we, we live in America. We, we, we have the freedoms, we have everything that America like lets us have, that Iranians in Iran don't have, but we still call ourselves Iranian. You know what I mean? <laughs> Growing up was difficult, especially when I decided not to change my name and I got picked on because of my name. I had different color hair than everyone else because we lived in a small country town. Everybody had blonde hair, blue eyes, everybody was Christian. So, I mean, I was really bothered <clears throat> growing up. But after I grew up and I went to high school and, you know, I, I started, um, you know, developing and I started putting on makeup and I was allowed to, like, you know, pluck my eyebrows, which was, like, forbidden for yeah. girls to ever <laughs> pluck. But then I was proud to be Iranian because, um, you know, you got more attention. My, I mean, my name alone being different 
is like, you know, conversation. You know, I don't, when I meet new people, I'm like proud to say, yeah, I'm Iranian. My experience was different. It wasn't, I didn't feel it was knowledge. I knew what my parents were telling me about Iran, about the history, about your identity, but that, that wasn't it. It was more that just you're different. You look different. You're always going to be treated differently. And no matter how much I knew, even if I could say all these great things that came from our, the history of our country and the fact that I'm cultural and I, I have more to offer than somebody who doesn't have this kind of culture, I could feel all that inside. But that didn't change it. I was still picked on. I still felt bad. You know, I, one of the craziest things when I think about it now was I, I was envious of the Iranian kids that looked more American. Because I thought, you know what, they, they probably get it less than I do. You know, I have darker skin, I have, you know, the, all of us have the names, some of them all took uh, American names just to make things easier, and I never did. And it, it, when I was, and this is when I was very young, you know, seven, eight years old. It's hard. And, I, I, yeah, I was in this because I'm like, God, they don't have to deal with this that I have to deal with. And it's just, it's so absurd for me to look at it like that now. Because I, it was confidence eventually. Maybe toward the end of high school, you start gaining your own identity. You accept who you are. You're proud of who you are, and that radiates. You know, if you're proud, even if you are different, you're proud of who you are. It doesn't matter. I wanted my name to be Mike. <laughs> when I was young, I wanted it to be Mike. I'm serious. And uh, yeah, I don't look like a Mike, do I? <laughs> so, um, like, when I got older, I, I I met some Iranians, and I was like, oh, this feels really good. I got more people on my side now. Now it feels good to be an Iranian. But before that, when I came over there and I saw just a bunch of American guys and I tried to be like them, I tried to be like them, which I couldn't. You can't be what you're not. No. I mean, most people, they're like, so what are you? Your last name is weird. You don't look different. You know, that's the thing, like the color of my skin. You know, my, my friend today, I was telling you, you know, I was planning to do this, and he's like, you're Iranian? I was like, yeah, you didn't tell my last name. And I've known this guy for like three years. So yeah, it's a big difference. I mean, I don't feel it like I have an identity problem. I mean, my problem is, you know, being half Iranian, not necessarily like feeling like I'm different looking. I mean, yeah, there's a way, you know, like my mom and people come over to my house and they see, okay, you take your shoes off and everything. This is a little different. But on the looks of it, the outside look, it, they, I guess people just don't realize that. Like all four, basically, it was just a disrespect you got from everyone, kids and their parents watching it on TV, you know, kids copy their parents and that's that's just how it is and the kids come to school and they portray it on you because you look like the people on TV. The Iranians used to get beat up during the hostage crisis. They didn't get beat up during the Gulf War, but they got picked on. But at September 11th, there was some picked on. Some Arabs got picked on, but the Iranians really got picked on. My older sister, she was in ninth grade when the hostage crisis happened in 1980, and she had it very. She had it worse than all of us could make, could imagine, because she would show up going to school, and she would be yelled at. People would throw things at her. People would threaten all the time. And she had no choice but to deal with it. And it was the toughest for her because she was the oldest child. She was the first in our family to, to go through all this, first in our family to experience any of that. Now, during the Gulf War, it wasn't so bad for me for a couple of reasons. One, I think I was in ninth grade. People were a little bit older. There was already some understanding. You know, uh, I think most of you guys were a few years younger. Being in grade, so I'm sure it would end up. Yeah, people say, hey, my brother got sent over there. If he gets killed, I'm going to bomb your house. I hear that. I just said, okay. Then let's hope he doesn't get killed. I didn't let it bother me. I did have friends at the time who had been to my house, who knew I was a different culture, who know how things work, and they know that I'm really not that much different than them as far as being a person goes, and socially. Those are the people that made it easier for me to get to it. It was not that big of a deal for me. I didn't get made fun of. We all enjoyed ourselves. We had fun. It was different over there. But for you guys, I can understand. <laughs> Growing up, my, my brother's older than me, mm -hmm. and you know, when we were both growing up, it wasn't asked, I never asked why, I never asked how, it was just, he got to do things that I never got to do. Like what? Um, for instance, like going out, um, spending a night out, or um, having girlfriends, or you know, just stuff like that. Like he got to like go away to college. Like when I graduated high school, my parents were like, "You want to go to Austin? No, 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 no. You need to stay at home." And if I did, I mean, just going to UNT alone and wanting to get an apartment was the biggest <coughs> battle because 
it's unheard of that an unmarried girl has her own place or something. And dating was really hard. I, I mean, to this day, I don't take a guy to my parents' house and say, this is my boyfriend, you know, unless, like, we're about to get married or something, and, you know. But it's really hard. I mean, it, I mean, I, there's a big difference. I think God, um, Iranian guys, men, have it very um, easy compared to the girls and how we had to adjust. I think for girls, there's more of a protectiveness around them. You know, my dad is like a bubble. Just now, I'm being allowed to go out and, you know, exactly. not have to tell him where I am. He kind of understands, but it took a long time, a lot of building of that trust in order for me to be able to go and do something with my friends and not have him, you know, stay up in the morning. You know, like, and about, like, dating, you know, my dad's like, well, you're going to date a guy who can read more on I'm like, all your friends wear makeup, yeah, shave their <laughs> legs, wear shorts, can wear tank tops. Even tank tops, that's a big issue. Like, <laughs> showing your arms. I mean, my dad was like, are you wearing that? I'm like, dad. And he's like, why are you wearing that? Let me, come here, let's go see what else you can wear. <laughs> In the Iranian culture, the man, even if your wife works, you cannot use your wife's money. You, you, you have to be the one who buys the house, who buys the car, who makes money. See, even if you're an Iranian man, you can't accept your wife bringing money. Just as far as dating, I just want to touch on this before I talk about the marriage because I feel like when I date an Iranian guy, okay, like before me, when he dated an American girl, he was a certain way, or he was, <coughs> excuse me, he was like really nice or his expectations from an American girl are completely different expectations from an Iranian girl. So I feel like when Iranian guys go out with Iranian girls, they expect them to be what he just said, to be like mentally and emotionally, but they don't expect her to try. Which is sad. I gotta admit that. Which is, sad. is really sad, and that's that sad. why I feel like a lot of Iranian girls that I know date American guys because American guys don't see that. They see them as their equal, but with an Iranian guy, he sees her as, oh, well, you're just my trophy. I mean, my mom, her being American, my dad being Iranian, he, they got married over here. The, my, my mom didn't see her in-laws till she already had my sister. You know, there wasn't that problem there, but I'm sure she, she felt, you know, the problems when my grandmother came over and my grandfather and she did feel like she had to, you know, learn Farsi and be, you know, she had to submit, you know, submit to them and be able to, you know, blend with them. But I, I think it is different if you have an American guy and an Iranian woman because an American guy is already open to the, the variety. Let me tell you something interesting. I've dated both places. I've dated in Iran and I've dated here. I ever I've been here for five years. I have not dated an Iranian girl in the U.S. <laughs> for me, if I want to get married, I don't want to bring an Iranian girl from Iran to here because I don't know how she's going to turn out. I want an Iranian girl who was raised up here. The thing is, I want, I don't want an Iranian from Iran. I want an Iranian girl who okay. grew up here. But we all agree with this. Dating for us is different than marriage. Exactly. That is a very good saying. They say they date white girls. When it comes to yeah. marriage, they date a, they marry a Iranian girl. That's every Iranian guy's plan. So it's my, when I'm around family and friends, I pick up the Iranian side. Even though I don't speak the language, I feel more Iranian. When I'm around my friends, it's kind of I'm wearing a different pair of shoes. It's a different role, kind of. And it's not like I when I think about it, I'm not consciously thinking it. You know, I'm being this person, I'm being this person now. Okay, Americans are very tolerant, more tolerant than we are. They, they, okay, they accepted us as who we are, and I'm going to their, co their college, and I'm getting, uh, I mean, it's working for me, okay? But to this day, there's been more occasions when I, when I pointed out the bad stuff than the good stuff. We're not accepting that, hey, they have some good stuff too, and we're taking the good stuff too. We're cocky, we're overconfident, and we, 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 we have to accept that we're not as tolerant as they are. But yeah. It's easier to be who you are here, yeah, back home. That's what I like about being here and being Iranian is, you know, like I said, like there's a balance. You know, when, when one fails, you always have the other to turn to, kind of. And I, I really feel privileged to have both cultures in, you know, my life. If anything, I feel very fortunate, like they said, to be 
part of two different cultures, literally part of two different cultures. I mean, I see my mom's side of the family, I see my dad's side of the family. I, I feel so blessed every day that I'm not your typical American person who just goes home and doesn't have that culture, something to go to, something to feel like I am richer than that. You know, I have, I have something, I have depth, value to something. There's something there. And, you know, each time, even when I haven't been around friends and family who are around me for a while, and just been around school friends and the Americans, you know, it's after I've seen just, you know, my dad's friends who are around me, I go back and I think, wow, I'm just really glad that I have that side to me. So far, it's been an amazingly cultural and educational experience, and it's turned me into a open-minded, more tolerant Iranian. That's it. I'm very glad to get the same center as everybody else. Yes, I do feel blessed. We're lucky. I am an American. I'm, I am proud of that. I don't ever want to deny that I am because I am. I'm very fortunate to be able to have <clears throat> take part in two different cultures. It's enriching. It helps you grow. It helps you in all other aspects of business, of education, of social environment. And just like everybody else, I, it really made me happy that every one of them said they were blessed. I didn't feel that way when I was a child. There were times where I didn't, I'm sure. Other times, you know, people wanted to reject one side or the other. But that makes me happy to know that everyone here feels the same way.